This is a quick overview of the Morphing Filter Bank. The Morphing Filter Bank is a unique take on formant filtering. It is made up of four bandpass filters connected in a feedback loop, and modulating the gain of this feedback loop using the voice control causes the peak of each bandpass filter to split into two, and those two peaks then diverge across the frequency spectrum. A typical use would be apply a harmonically rich waveform at the input and then tap the different outputs for different timbres. This module is great for parallel processing as well as adding subtle timbral shifts to bass and lead patches. I'm going to jump into some patch demonstrations to show different uses of this module. For this first layer, I'm going to take my two oscillators and mix them together using the top section of Mix 6. We're going to hear their square wave outputs. The two oscillators are receiving the same CV sequence from our MIDI to CV converter, but they are tuned a fifth apart. I'm now going to take the output of Mix 6 and feed it to the input of the morphing filter bank. Now I'm going to take the two 6 dB outputs from the morphing filter bank and apply them to the two audio inputs on our dual low pass gate. The accompanying gate sequence coming out of our MIDI to CV converter is going to be used to trigger the flip flop style clock divider on dual phonic distribution. And those flip-flop outputs will be used to trigger our two decay envelopes, which are going to open up our two low-pass gates. You'll hear that the two low-pass gate outputs are panned left and right in Ableton Live. This patch is similar to the duophonic patch I've shown in previous videos, but it is more bitambral than it is duophonic. This is because the same monophonic sequence is being applied to both oscillators and we are instead using duophonic distribution to sequentially trigger two different timbres coming out of the morphing filter bank. To get more variation throughout this patch, I'm going to take our initial gate sequence and apply it to the gate input of the first sample and hold on duophonic distribution. Now the output will provide a random voltage that is in time with our sequence coming from Ableton Live. By applying this random voltage to the input of Gilbert, I can restrain it to a plus or minus 5 volt range. I'm now going to take the fold output of Gilbert and apply it to the CV input of our morphing filter bank. To add another layer of modulation and increase the variation throughout this patch, I'm going to take an LFO and use it to modulate the output level of Gilbert. This will provide some more repetitive modulation alongside the random modulation we are getting from our sample and hold. Our MIDI to CV converter also has a velocity CV output, which I'm going to use to modulate the rate of our LFO. This is going to result in the LFO quickly speeding up and then gradually slowing down at the beginning of every chord you hear. I'm actually going to molt this velocity CV and apply it to the bottom section of mix six. I'm also going to grab the initial pitch CV sequence and apply it to the mixer as well. The output of this mixer is going to be applied to a molt and this molt is going to be applied to our two CV inputs for the decay rate of our envelope generators. This is going to result in the decay envelopes gradually getting shorter as each chord plays. So at the beginning of each chord, the low pass gate will ring out longer and louder, and by the end of the chord it will be pluckier and shorter. And you can hear how much the sound changes as I play with the settings on the mixer. I'm going to 
add one more layer of modulation to this patch. Two more LFOs are going to be used to modulate the pulse width of our square waves. These LFOs come from the same module as our LFO before, and they will also be affected by the velocity CV that we patched. I'm now going to build another patch from scratch and create a simple baseline to show a more subtle use of the morphing filter bank. We again have a CV sequence coming from our MIDI to CV converter. I'll use a stackable cable to send it to both oscillators and then those oscillators will be mixed with the top section of mix 6. We have a square wave and then a triangle wave an octave below. The output of the mixer is going to the input of the morphing filter bank and then the notch output will be fed to the input of our dual low pass gate. The accompanying gate sequence coming from our MIDI to CV converter will go straight to the gate input of our decay envelope and the output of this decay envelope will be patched to the CV input of our dual low pass gate. With the patch as it is, we don't really hear the effect of the morphing filter bank. So what I'm going to do is molt our gate sequence and apply it to the gate input of the sample and hold on duophonic distribution like we did with the previous patch. And I'm going to take our random voltage from the output and apply it to the input of Gilbert to again restrict it to a plus or minus 5 volt range. The fold output of Gilbert will then be applied to the CV input of the morphing filter bank. And we might as well modulate the output level of Gilbert with an LFO like we did in the previous patch. We're also going to modulate the decay time of our envelope generator. So we'll grab that same velocity CV from our MIDI to CV converter again and apply it to the bottom section of mix 6. We're also going to mold the decay envelope itself and apply it to that same mixer. We're going to use the input with an attenuverter so that we can invert the decay envelope. The envelope is already exponential, but we can get an even snappier and more exaggerated exponential response by inverting the decay envelope and applying it to its own CV input. So now I'm going to patch the output of our mixer to the CV input of our decay envelope. Currently, our decay envelope is too short to fully open up our low pass gate. And we already sacrificed our DC offset because we used the attenuverter for the decay envelope. But if we grab a DC offset from duophonic distribution and apply it to our remaining input, we can set a minimum value for the decay time. Let's hear the bass line by itself for a little while. some more motion to the space patch by grabbing two more LFOs and modulating the pulse width of our square wave and the shape of our triangle wave. filter bank changes a lot depending on the audio that you feed it. The highly resonant bandpass filters definitely prefer harmonically rich waveforms, but it's also great for processing drums, polyphonic synthesizers, and even full mixes. to show how the morphing filter bank is great for parallel processing.
I'm just going to jump right into it with this patch. It is the duophonic patch that I've shown in previous videos. I have two saw wave oscillators to create two distinct voices. They're each being routed to their own channel on the dual low pass gate. And the outputs of these two channels are being mixed together with the top section of mix six. The output of this mixer is being routed to the input of the morphing filter bank. We have three outputs being routed to Ableton. The notch output is being left dry and in the center of our mix, while the two band pass outputs are being hard panned left and right and being directly routed to a delay and reverb. As for modulation, we have an LFO coming into the bottom section of mix six. It's being mixed along with a DC offset and our initial pitch CV sequence. The output of this mixer is being routed to a molt and then to the two CV inputs of our decay envelopes. This same LFO is also being processed through Gilbert and the fold output of Gilbert is being applied to the CV input of Morphing Filter Bank. In this patch, Gilbert is providing a sine wave that is three times the frequency of the input LFO. The output level of Gilbert is being modulated by our original pitch CV sequence so that with different notes you get different amounts of modulation. This is the most common way for me to use the morphing filter bank. The bandpass filters carve out so much harmonic content that you can use these very long delays and reverbs without muddying up your mix. Oftentimes, I won't even use the notch output in a context like this. I will mold the input signal and have the input signal dry in the center of my mix, and then use the bandpass outputs to drive delays and reverbs and have them set to 100% wet. All of the form and shifting in resonant filter sweeps will get caught up in your delay and reverb and ring out in the background of your mix, creating these very nice atmospheres and interesting textures. I'll bring back the other layers so that we can hear everything all together. 